Our math program in the three to third project, which is from our age three to grade three, has uh, utilized Montessori materials. elements in a Montessori classroom are so focused and focusing the child's attention on specific differences and dimensions in the quantitative aspects of the world around the child. Math leaps out at a child just by the interaction with the objects that are in the room. We know from research that math education uh, is an important predictor of educational success overall. Some research, for example, demonstrated that mathematics is a key element in the early cognitive development of children and a key predictor of later success in school, not only in math, but in reading as well. We didn't used to believe that preschool children were ready to be taught math. It seems counterintuitive to most of us that math would be such a strong predictor of school success when it seems like what we do is read and write. And that seems to be what matters the most as one goes through school. But early math seems to incorporate cognitive processes and input-output processes like reading and writing as well uh, that are uh, demanding of precision and understanding. I'm doing the hundred four. And what do you do? How does it work? You find the, the numbers and you put it on these squares. The design of the material and the presentation is, is, has been very well thought out. Maria Montessori spent a lot of time watching the children interact with the materials and then making adjustments. So what we have now to work with are well-sequenced, well-organized materials that build from concrete interactions to abstract, more abstract ideas. Since Dahi started Star School, I've seen a great deal of progress in math. Uh, she loves math, in fact. She does addition, she does subtraction, she likes to figure out with her uh, morning breakfast sometimes. She takes the blueberries or the apples and she does addition and she does subtraction and so it's wonderful. The Montessori materials build and build and build. Um, we start with very simple counting and with the number rods, for example. It's red and blue rods and they get bigger. So one is red and then two is red and then blue. So they learn how to count and touch through counting. That's the very one of the very first lessons they get in addition to uh, sandpaper numbers where they trace the number, feel it, and which embeds it in their brain. It's, it's this whole process. Then we move into, you know, more counting of the beads. We move into counting spindles. Um, eventually, as I mentioned, we move into uh, the addition. In kindergarten, they can go all the way through division. One divided by one is one. Two divided by one is two. Three divided by one is three. Four. And I'd say one of the things that stands out the most, a couple things that stand out the most in my mind about his experience, and one is, is that he's really good with multiplication, using the counting beads, and 
he uh, has already done his multiplication tables all the way one through ten. Starting with these high quality materials at the very young ages and seeing how children can can leapfrog over what we might have thought was an impossible concept for them to understand at that early age and seeing them actually get a concept of what is a thousand for example and what does that look like and know that a three-year-old can actually get that concept of what is a thousand that's an astounding thing to me and it's something that I think um, helps us as educators in our relationship with the children because it's, it keeps us from assuming that we know how much they can actually know. Uh, if we give them this opportunity, they may surprise us. I think that is the beauty of, of Montessori math, that at this um, early level when children are uh, so impressionable and absorbing so much, we have high quality, beautiful materials that A, inspire their interest um, to make them want to use the materials and learn from them. Um, they're made from wood and glass um, and uh, the children just are dying to touch them. They want to see what all the beads are about. It, it invites them in. The children also need to be able to discover how the new concept builds on the old concept and again by using these materials in an effectively guided way um, they can do this. Oh Matt Aubrey she's very I mean she will not stop talking about math. She do it at home she'll even ask her brother can I do your homework? <laughs> As the materials progress they focus on one concept at a time until a child has mastered that concept before moving on to the next thing. So the this, this sequence begins with um, isolating one thing at a time. So in the beginning we are just counting one to ten. Then we, then we move to um, learning the numerals, uh, you know, this is six. And then we move to counting and associating the numerals. So each thing um, in the, is isolated as, as they go along. Uh, my six-year-old daughter is now counting by the thousands and uh, she understands the opposite and she's learning decimal system as well. They allow the children to learn concepts at an increasingly sophisticated level of understanding Place value is another word that, that is used for the decimal system. Um, we call it the 45 layout. And so they learn placement of thousands, hundreds, tens, and units. And they do that through these golden bead materials. So one unit is one golden bead. 10 is a 10 bar. Um, 100 is a 100 square. And then 1,000 is a 1,000 cube. So they gradually get larger in size. The children feel these things. They see each other doing it. And they are just wowed by it and inspired by it. The Montessori platform is especially good for this population of children because it is so exploratory in nature. Another virtue of this program, that is they can learn through exploration with all of their senses. Uh, there are some little pieces that lead you through sensorial uh, exploration to discover different sizes, shapes, quantities, qualities, the sorts of things that underlie mathematical concepts. Just can't wait to show you what they do. Numbers, they will work for you. Let's do the numbers counting right. So many of um, our materials are built to incorporate many of the senses all at the same time. With the, the different um, modes of stimulation, working memory can remember and record and recall more completely. Six, seven, eight, nine. One of the early math 
materials, the red and blue rods. It's a work that is practicing counting one to ten and then eventually associating the numerals. Seeing the, the change in color, they're kinesthetically moving and they're feeling the length of the rod. Also, auditorily, they're counting out loud, they're hearing me count. When they br bring the material to their rug, they bring each rod individually. So they are making ten trips back and forth. So in just that one material, they've been able to incorporate almost all of their senses as just their entry into the math materials uh, in the Montessori classroom. One and one is two, two and two is four for you, three and three is six, and four and four is eight, that's great, oh five and five is ten, six and six is twelve and then. They're very hands-on, they like to work together, they like to feel confident, and that's the most important thing that I've seen is that the Montessori materials instill confidence in these kids, and that's Everything. So we're integrating small group instruction, some direct instruction, but a lot of children being facilitated to use the high quality materials. So now how many do we have in there? Nine. We don't have 22? We have nine, good. That's the thing about Montessori materials is they're, they inherently have built into them this love of learning. She's doing awesome right now. She's learning her additions and she's got her numbers all, all done. She has those long chains and that she's doing right now and She's counting way past 100 right now. <laughs> 44, 245, Recent studies have come out um, that have highlighted a very interesting aspect of this, uh, what we sometimes think of as a divide between those coming from a privileged sort of middle class or upper middle class uh, educational background or family socioeconomic background and those kids who are coming from a poverty background. And one of the things that is so compelling about some recent studies is that the young children coming from poverty situations do not vary a great deal in terms of their understanding of concepts, math concepts, from the children coming from more privileged socioeconomic situations. What is different is for the knowledge of the children to be able to identify, label, and name these concepts. So what that tells us is that we really need to work on not just teaching the concepts, but teaching the math labels, the names of these concepts, the academic language. One of the things that we do is, is use real uh, vocabulary when we, we name the work and in the presentation of the materials. So for example, um, we don't call these the blue shapes, we call them the geometric solids because that's technically what the, their names are. And so, um, you know, not only do they learn the name of this solid, they learn that this is a sphere, they also learn that as, as a group that these are the geometric solids. Um, they start to, to be comfortable with that kind of advanced vocabulary. This is um, actually the, the binomial cube, and they learn to call it the binomial cube. It's um, a concrete representation of ab algebraic equations or functions. And, um, you know, although they're not doing algebra right now, they're using it more as a puzzle, and they're, but they're getting um, a first concrete experience with it, and they're also calling it the binomial cube. So the word binomial is in their vocabulary now. So whenever we are teaching a child, we always uh, you know, use math language when we're teaching. Thousands, hundreds, tens, and units. It looks really cool, doesn't it? I like it. I like it a lot. They need to have an association of these labels 
with um, the concepts so that when it's discussed in an academic setting, the children know what's being talked about. When my daughter practices her math, she speaks with addition, subtraction, and so she uses, uh, she, use, she uses the math lingo that she should be. Sometimes I'm like, uh, what happens when you put this and this together? She's like, oh, add, when you add these things together. So schooling can play a really important role in setting those children up for school success later on. So it's important to get children engaged in math, to get teachers engaged in helping children find their way through math. Numbers, numbers, just can't wait to show you what they do. Numbers, they will work for you. Let's do the numbers counting rag. Oh, let's do the numbers counting rag. Three times. One, two, three. Good afternoon, TV. Yeah. <laughs>